my journey. This time last year, in March, it was time for me to get a biopsy, a mammogram, I'm sorry. And I was nervous, it was my first one. And I didn't know what to expect, but I went and I had it, thinking everything was okay. And I got a phone call from my doctor and she relayed to me that I had a mask. And I said, a mask, what is that? She said, you have a mask on your left breast. I said, okay. So I'm scared at this point. So they sent me to have some biopsies. And after sitting there listening to the doctors, I had a whole room of doctors, whole team of them. They told me from the biopsy that I had stage three breast cancer that was spreading, it was progressive. I couldn't receive it. I could not receive it. I sit there and I was in another world. They were trying to talk to me and I still, I just, it was just like, I'm not hearing you. And they told me that I was gonna have to have my breast taken off completely. And um, I was gonna have to go through 21 rounds of chemo, over a year worth of radiation. And I was just so distraught, scared, frustrated, didn't know what to do. I couldn't even pray for myself. I was depressed, I'm human too. I was depressed, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to expect, but there was a man named God and he turned my situation around. I remember my pastor telling me one day that, you know, it was gonna be a miracle that was gonna take place. And at that time, I was a little, still a little shaken. I said, okay, okay, Pastor, I receive that. I receive it. And the doctors still were just telling me what all I was gonna have to do and um, what I couldn't do. And from March to about May, my surgery was May 16th. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat. I had about 20 hours of sleep in those months. I was wrestling, I was fighting. And I had some praying angels. I had some praying angels. I had some spiritual people in my life that knew how to call on the name of Jesus and for me because I was in a place where I could not pray for myself. And I just thank God that he knows what you need when you need it. And he surrounded me with some people, some great people. My church family, I love them. There's no church like my church. And I love them dearly, truly. My church family, Tam, my, my cousin Lula was such an inspiration to me such a prayer warrior for me also. But as I laid in the bed before surgery, I had to answer to God and say yes. I kept hearing it, but I wouldn't say it. I kept hearing the voice say, just say yes. So as I laid there, I kept saying yes, yes. Yes, God, I went to have surgery and God had touched my body. The tumor would not stay still and I knew then something wasn't right. It was moving all over the place. 
and I knew God had his hand on me. He was working in my favor. So I went to have surgery, and after surgery, I still had my breasts. That tumor had shrunk from five centimeters down to the size of a raisin. Don't tell me what God won't do. Still scared and shaking, I didn't know what to expect, what to do. I was laying on my back for several months. Couldn't do nothing for myself. And I thank God. He still had angels encamped all around me. After I had my surgery, and they told me I had to have treatments. And my doctor said, I don't understand what happened. So I looked at him, and I smiled. I said, I know. He said, well, you're only going to have to have four treatments of chemo. I said, thank you, Jesus. He said, we're only going to give you six weeks of radiation. God turned this thing around in my favor. I went through the chemo. They had told me, you were going to be sick. You ain't going to be able to do nothing. You're going to be laying in the bed. You ain't going to be able to get up. You ain't going to be able to do this and do that. How about I still was able to run my business? God still made a way for me to run a car wash business with the help of my children. I pressed my way because I made up in my mind that I was not going to give up. It was a struggle, but I pressed my way. Through chemo, I had six weeks of radiation. I worked every day. I washed cars. I cleaned my house. I cooked. I shopped. I did the things that I used to do that they told me that I wasn't going to be able to do. But I just wouldn't, I wouldn't give up. I wouldn't give up. And I went, I had my radiation done six weeks, every day. It was like going to work. It was hard. I got weary. I got tired. I didn't want to go no more. But my angel told me, you got to go. So I pressed my way, and I completed it. The radiation doctor told me, you've been a complicated case. I still can't figure you out. I looked at him, and I smiled. I said, it was God. Nobody but Jesus. I went, and I finished everything they had me to do. This March, I had completed everything. It was time for me to have my mammogram. I was nervous. And I had the mammogram. They left me sitting in the room, and I was praying. Because I know that God is a healer. Amen. He is a deliverer. So they came in the room. She said, everything looks good. She gave me my report, but I already knew the report. I knew that God had already touched my body. I knew that he had already healed me from cancer. They told me I had stage three progressive breast cancer, that they were gonna, it was spreading fast. They had to operate on me fast, but God turned it around. And I look at healing now, it takes on a new meaning for me. When you have to go through something and you've been sick and on your sick bed and you don't know what to do or where to go, I know without a shadow of a doubt, if you just stay in the presence of God, he will heal your body. He will touch you. He will build you up. He will strengthen you. He will lift you up when you're down because he is a healer. 
Do anybody know he's a healer? I know it for myself. It became a personal thing for me. I don't take nothing for granted. I take nothing for granted. I said, God, I'm young. I'm in perfect health. I don't take medicine for nothing. I said, God, why me? I said, God, why? I kept hearing him say, why not you? I said, God, I heard so many people say this and that and what they had to go through and it was just horrible. Everybody's experience is not the same. What you may go through as a cancer survivor, I may not have to go through. How things affect you may not affect me. And I tell you what, God, he graced me, he blessed me that I was able to go through. It wasn't easy at first, but I got to a place where I had to start praising him. And I went to church, even though I didn't feel good sometimes, I said, I got to go. Because I know, I know, I know who touched me, who healed me, who delivered me. So I had to press my way. So I went to church with a smile on my face. I was in pain, but I had a smile on my face. I was in pain, but I had to shout in my pain. I was in pain, but I had to rejoice through my pain. I was in pain, but I had to keep on moving. I was in pain, but I kept on pressing. I was in pain, but I just kept on moving on. And he delivered me. And he's taken me to a greater place. A place in him that I can rest in him. Where there's fullness of glory. And I can smile and I'm happy. I'm happy in Jesus. Because he moved on my life. It's a blessing to know the Lord. I pray and I ask God, God don't take your spirit away from me. I've known the Lord for my little girl. But there came a change in my life. I've been through a lot and I didn't understand. But I understand it better and better and better as time goes on. But anybody in here that has went through any type of cancer, I can sympathize with you. It's not easy. But God will make a way out of no way. You just got to believe him and you got to trust him. And I thank God for what he is doing in my life because it pushed, it pushed me to where I'm going now. And I thank him because he delivered me in a time when I didn't think I was going to make it. And I bless God today and I thank him. I am a survivor. I am cancer free. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am the head and I'm not the tail. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. I am healed by his stripes. The word will not lie. His word will not return to him void. By his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes, you are healed. Walk in your healing. Walk in your healing. I thank God and I bless him because he delivered me. Thank you, Jesus. I take my mind back to the Wesley, Wesley Long Cancer Center that last week, my angel, I call my sister Tam, my angel, one of my angels, we had church at Wesley Long. God will put people around you, he will surround you, you never understand, but he has a plan. The nurses, I did, I, it was just overwhelming. Speaking words over my life. And he just, God is so awesome. 
I didn't understand. My pastor had told me, he said, be careful because you never know when you're entertaining an angel. And this really took me for a loop because I heard people talk about it, but I got to experience it. I was sharing with my cousin Lula about this lady that worked at, she worked at Wesley Long. Let me tell y'all how God does things. She brought it to my remembrance that after the team of doctors came in the room, she was the last one that came in the room and she sat right beside me. I don't even remember her. My cousin told me she even prayed with me. I don't even remember it. I was going for treatment and this lady would just appear and sit where I was at. She wouldn't say anything, she would just smile and she would ask me how I'm doing. I said, I'm doing good. I would be sitting in the waiting area. She would just come and just sit. She, was know, she would know I was there every time I go. And I didn't think nothing of it, I didn't. She came one more time, my children was there, my daughter was there, I think I was sleeping. She came, I was asleep, she left. One last time I was in the hospital, she came in the room, I was down having a procedure. She left a card with Tam and an angel. And they had a benefit for me. She said, I showed it to her, the, the flyer, she said, I'm coming. I said, okay. She came, her and her husband. She supported. We took pictures with her. We went to her office, and I had never been there before, up on the top floor, the third floor of Wesley Lone. We went in, Sam asked me, she said, do you know where you're going? I said, no, I'm being led by the Holy Ghost. I ain't never been up here. I went and I knocked and I asked the lady. She said, she's in that room right there. We went in and she began to speak a word in my life. She prayed with us. We had church again at Wesley Long on the third floor. So we took pictures with her and she said, bring me my picture back. I said, I will. I went for my last visit at Wesley Long and I went upstairs to carry her picture. How many of you know she was nowhere to be found? I asked, the, I said, where is Lasagna? They didn't even know who I was talking about. They said, no one works here by that name, ma'am. I said, what'd you say? Nobody works here. I said, she's, she was in that office, go open the door. When they opened the door, it was a storage room. I almost passed out. And the lady whispered, she said, did she have treatment today? Is she okay? Do we need to call somebody? I was trying to get Tam on the phone. I was like, I, I met this lady. She's been here with me just about the whole time I've been going through my journey. They said, ma'am, this woman does not exist. I took pictures with this lady. We hugged this lady, she spoke a word in my life. I'm gonna tell you what, you cannot do nothing with God. I had an encounter with an angel. He was with me all the time. From the first day I went to Wesley Long, he was with me. I didn't know that. But I later found out that God had an angel to be with me in the midst of everything that I was going through. He was right there. And I cannot thank him enough. I cannot praise him enough. Because he loved me so much that he would send down an angel, a tangible angel, to come and sit by my side 
to come and watch over me. Look on me. I thank God. Oh my God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. My soul cries out. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. I thank God. I thank him. I thank him. He didn't have to do it, but he did. I thank him. He moved on my behalf. I'm not perfect. I've had flaws, but I'm pressing and I'm trying to live all I can live to see the king. He has blessed me more than you'll ever know. He had people walk up to me that I didn't even know, strangers, planting seeds in my life. I didn't even understand. I didn't miss one beat. My rent was paid. My lights was paid. We were never hungry. And I thank God, because I know what he can do. And I thank him. I just can't thank him enough. Anyone that has experienced or has went through or know somebody or has someone in a family that has went through cancer, it's a serious thing. But it's how your mindset is. It's how you take it in. It's how you want to fight. And you can give up or you can fight. You can press or you can just lay there and just let it take over. But I refuse to give up. And I thank God for everything that he has done in my life, my children's life. I thank God for my children. They run my business when I couldn't run it. And it's an honor and a privilege to stand before you and share with you because everybody's story is different. But I know that I know that I know that I know that I am healed and I am a survivor and I bless God and I thank God for what he has done for me. And I thank you for this opportunity to speak. Be blessed.